when you burn fossil fuels, there's all these like side reactions and, and toxic gases of various kinds, particulates that, that are bad for your lungs. Like there's, there's all sorts of bad things that are happening that will go away. Please rationalize those claims against this. In case you haven't heard, in Texas, Musk has been looking to set up shop to drill for natural gas, meant to supply a 250 megawatt gas-fired electricity generation station with 150-foot tall smokestacks as proposed in his draft programmatic environmental assessment in Boca Chica. The launch complex and the natural gas power plant are right on the edge of four different protected nature preserves and beaches. Would it shock you to discover we've covered this before in a couple of episodes, including in our open letter to the FAA in opposition to the Boca Chica development? Look for this episode here. If the solar panel and battery systems are so wonderful and efficient and cheap to install, and it's imperative for humanity to transition to a sustainable energy economy, why does Musk need this massive private natural gas power plant big enough to power a small city of 100,000 homes to electrify his manufacturing and launch complex? Just goes to show his total hypocrisy on the topic. Clean energy is great for everyone else, apparently. But Musk should be left alone to burn as much fossil fuel as he wants, either in his giant power plants, or his European car factory, or out the ass end of his ICBM test article. Nobody is enforcing the rules or the laws. You need to remind them that the building that Musk has done in Boca Chica has all happened without FAA approval. And while you're at it, remind them what Elon Musk's record of environmental stewardship actually is. Remind them about the 100-acre wildfire. Remind them of the green turtle die-off in 2019. The explosions at all times of day and night. The cryogenic gases released during these explosions. And the 4,600 tons of carbon dioxide and water vapor greenhouse gas that come with every Starship launch. The environmental report the FAA conducted in 2013 and released in 2014 reported their concerns with a number of endangered and critically endangered species that inhabit this area and the protected lands surrounding the Boca Chica facility. Let's go through these one by one. Up first is the endangered ocelot. Ocelots are endangered because their habitat has been cleared for farming and to accommodate for the growth of cities. Between 30 and 35 of these beautiful cats remain in the Brownsville area. The U.S. population of this cat numbers less than 50. More than half of the American population of this cat live in this particular area. Next up, the southern coastal jaguarundi mentioned in this document was believed to be extinct in Texas, and they were reintroduced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 2014. The Rio Grande Valley is their native habitat, and these protected lands are part of that repopulation effort. You know, these brushlands that Musk doesn't mind burning down. There are also species of endangered birds in this area. The northern Aplomato falcon was listed as endangered in February of 1986, prompting a recovery and breeding program that has been successful, although their wild population continues to decline. This raptor is extremely sensitive to human disturbance, and loud or unusual noises will cause them to abandon their nest. Piping plovers are another threatened species that the FAA Environmental Assessment mentions. They are in recovery in the U.S., but have moved to the endangered list in other countries such as Canada. They are a shorebird that nest on the sandy ground. They are also extremely sensitive to disturbances and will abandon their nests if they're scared away. Red knots are another species of bird listed in that report as threatened, but they are declining in population towards being listed as endangered with an estimated population of less than 25,000 animals. And wrapping up the list, we've got five species of sea turtles that use the accompanying beaches, and every single one of them is endangered. The only question is, are they endangered or are they critically endangered? As it turns out, the rarest sea turtle on Earth is the Kemp Ridley sea turtle. And this particular turtle is mentioned in this environmental assessment as using the Boca Chica beaches as their nesting grounds. In any other situation, this would immediately qualify this entire area as untouchable. So too with the hawksbill sea turtle, which is also critically endangered. This turtle population has to combat not only human and predator consumption of animals and eggs, but also the tortoiseshell jewelry market. These turtles face enough hurdles. They don't need to be dodging exploding rockets and stainless steel fragments raining down from the sky, especially since turtles are attracted to shiny objects. The leatherback sea turtles are next on the list, and guess what? They're critically endangered too. They are the very largest of all living turtles and the last remaining species of the genus Dermochelis in the family Dermochelidae, names indicating the animal's lack of carapace with only flexible leather-like skin across their back. Green sea turtles are the first on this list that are not critically endangered, yet. 
However, with their populations in decline, it is expected these turtles will also continue to face increased threats of commercial harvest for eggs and food, moving them from endangered to becoming critically endangered. And the loggerhead turtles wrapping up this list are firmly in the endangered category, since their populations have fallen between 50 and 90 percent in the past six decades, that's according to U.S. fisheries. All these turtles need safe, secure, and protected beaches to lay their eggs, and those egg clutches cannot be walked or driven upon, otherwise the entire clutch can be lost. Now, we're going to preemptively answer the question that ignorant fanboys are going to ask. The question is, who cares about turtles? We do. You should. The health of the oceans depends on them. According to SeaTurtles.org, turtles are considered a keystone species, meaning they are an important part of the environment and they influence other species around them. Their homepage lists off five reasons that sea turtles are really, really important. For starters, they control their prey. Very few other animals eat jellyfish, and the favorite prey of jellyfish is fish larvae. So a healthy turtle population, reducing the number of jellyfish, increases the odds of survival for all manner of fish. And large populations of ocean sponges are capable of suffocating slow-growing coral reefs, so the turtles are protecting the reef and all its inhabitants through their diet. Also, turtles provide nutrients on the beaches they nest in, which provides sustenance for organisms further down the food chain, as well as coastal vegetation. Their hatchlings, sadly, provide an important food source for many other types of animals, with the vast majority of turtle babies never even making it to the water after hatching out. Coastal economies that at one time would have harvested these animals for food or leather or jewelry have now shifted their focus instead to ecotourism, with turtles at the center of that economy. And the seagrasses so many oceanic species rely on for food or habitat are kept groomed by grazing green sea turtles. Now there are people who will say losing these species is a small price to pay in the overall quest for space. And for those people, we have two words for them. Absolutely nothing on Earth should be destroyed in Musk's completely flawed quest to make humanity multiplanetary. Musk has proven through his reckless handling of environmental issues around the world that he does not care whatsoever about the environmental impact or stewardship of this planet. He's in a misguided sprint towards Mars, and it seems he doesn't care how much of Earth he needs to destroy in that quest. And if he plans on exporting that opinion off-world, he might as well be shut down right now. There is absolutely no reason why these species have to suffer at his hand, and these are just the land-dwelling animals. If Musk is allowed to move into the open ocean to launch off his refurbished oil platforms, there will be an entirely different environmental set of concerns above and below the water, as we went through in Episode 8. 